Hi, welcome to another episode of my Let's Play. And remember when I said last time that I would w have to do something about that Wing Rider because I was being me and of course the comment section was going ape shit and yeah, I was being an idiot and welcome to my life and all that. Y you know the deal. Uh, so I forgot that I was working on a Wing Rider and I built that tunnel that a Wing Rider wouldn't fit through. So I've decided to get rid of the Wing Rider and just make it an Intamin Blitz. Or not an Intamin Blitz, an Intamin LSM or whatever you kids call those things these days. Um, you know the drill. So that's what's going on right now. So this is not a Wing Rider anymore. Wing Rider is RIP. It's now an Intamin Blitz. Uh, now an Intamin LSM. How do I keep... <laughs> oh... Okay, this is how terrible I am at coaster shit. So basically, uh, it's this one Intamin coaster with a box track or something that looks pretty swell and it's pretty fast and, and stuff and it does curves and I'm going to add scenery. That's basically my train of thought at this, po at this point. Though, I am doing these supports right now. And I think I promised last time that I would actually work on the foliage for the invert ones, but... Yeah, I kind of been procrastinating that because we've done enough foliage on the on that invert and I didn't really feel like doing it and I did feel like working on the scenery and supports of this ride, so I just decided to go for that because this is just kind of like um well I don't know why, but I just wanted to get this done basically. And that's why I'm working on this. So and it, it's pretty funny because it's actually when I recorded my tutorial, uh, well, both of my tutorials, and I actually showed my Chrome theme and it, people were like, oh, yes, the evolutions and all that. And it's it's basically, if you haven't seen that, it, I have a Chrome theme with evolutions with Pink Floyd, um, the Dark Side of the Moon album cover. And it's kind of a mashup and a parody sort of. And it's really cool and I like it. And people actually said that someone had it on a shirt, and I was like, mm, that's a good idea, I might actually print it. But also, I decided to just listen to Pink Floyd while playing Roller Coaster in 3 today. And I must say, it was actually pretty good. Like, it kind of works as a working music, because you don't really want, or, or at least I don't want my music to be too distracting or too catchy, poppy kind of stuff. I also don't really like to listen to electronic dance music when, when playing Roller Coaster Engine 3, so I figured that Mozart was actually a nice thing to listen to, but symphonic metal and rock were also very successful, but yeah, Pink Floyd works as well, so um, yeah, I just keep experimenting and life is good. So that's basically what's going on when it comes to that, but that's not really that important, because of course you guys can't hear that. And I'm glad that I turned off my sound because I don't want to listen to Pink Floyd at 16 times the speed because of the time lapse. Now, these supports, I think, are somewhat intimate-ish. The only problem with intimate supports that I have is that I just don't have enough experience with them. I kind of don't really know how to place everything. I figured they would just be like B&M in a sense, except they would be wider. And they do have cross beams. But I think that I'm still better at b and supports than anything else. But at that point I figured, okay, I've done enough supports for today, I'm just going to run the layout and see what the speed is like. Speed is okay, and let's work on some castles, because I haven't worked on a nice little castle in a very long time, and they're always fun to work on, so I figured might as well. Now, it, the game did crash like twice or even three times when I was building this, so that wasn't, uh, well, that wasn't very great, but it's not that huge of a deal. At least, I was a spastic saver. I thought at one point that I lost everything, but apparently I'm just such a spastic saver that I even save without actually knowing it. So, I didn't lose as much as I thought I would have. So, that's cool. And, as you might see and recognize, this little gate over here is very similar to the gate that I have on the little tunnel. And, I don't know why, I just decided to kind of keep that as a recurring theme. But build around this one with a castle and all that to actually make it look very different. And really this is all just experimentation on the, at, well when it comes to this. Because I've never really done a theme like this. I've never really worked with these sets before. So really I'm very new to this as well. So I don't know if I can say too much about that. It's just a usual castle shit. Just building loads of towers and then calling it a castle. Because that's pretty much how it works. Though, that's that's probably oversimplifying it. But yeah, my plan with this is to just add as many buildings as I can on this and just make a one huge facade. But also something that I want to try with this is actually making 
uh, kind of a skyline. Now that may, that might sound very weird, especially when you're looking at all the sets that I'm using, like the spooky sets and the alpine and medieval. So it might seem kind of weird to build a skyline with that. But without realizing it, I actually saw that my entrance somehow had a cool skyline as well. So I figured that I might as well try and build a skyline with some spooky stuff as well and see how that comes out. And if it, if it really turns out terrible, then I might as well re remove it. But if it turns out nice, then that's just something that I've done. So that'd be cool. And basically, what I want to take this is this whole park is kind of um, inspired by anime stuff. Um, in the general sense of things, of course, it's it doesn't have to do too much with it, but the rides um, are somewhat themed to some stuff, and um, that might seem very obvious. And it's actually Attack on Titan where I got the idea to kind of mix steampunk and medieval, and people were like, no, you don't do that. And I was like, they do it in anime, so might as well. Though it's not really that steampunk, I just felt like it kind of was with the 3D maneuver gears and the general um, medieval kind of style that the show had. But somehow it had some modern elements as well. But um, basically I'm kind of drifting off. Basically what I wanted to do with this ride is something extremely stupid. Which I don't know uh, if any of my subscribers actually know of this, but I've had a Professor Layton... Um, yeah, it's not really an obsession, but I've played it a lot in my life. So I figured that I would make something that's kind of inspired by Professor Layton. Now, if you don't know Prof Professor Layton, it's a Japanese puzzle game, and that's basically it. You need to solve puzzles. And oh my god, can it be annoying at times? Because you get the same music over and over again when solving puzzles, and you're going to spend hours, well, hundreds of hours, possibly in the game, uh, solving puzzles with the same music over and over again on your DS. So that music is going to kill your brain as soon as you hear it. But also, you'd walk around with the storyline and uh, look at the scenery and be like, hmm, that's nice, a nice story and all that. And then suddenly Professor Layton would go, hmm, that reminds me of a puzzle. And then you need to solve a puzzle. And then uh, those things, those moments are very annoying. But it's a fun game overall. And this one's kind of going to be based on Professor Layton and the Curious Village. I think that's the title, yeah. And that's a game that I've played a very long time ago. I think it's the first Professor Layton game. And basically what it was, it was a village that, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, but in the middle of the village there was this spooky kind of tower, and the tower had all kinds of things sticking out of it. And it nearly seemed to just, um, well, disregard gravity. How do you even do that? Uh, yeah, but that's kind of what it did. So I figured that I might as well try that as well. And try and get some near floating parts of buildings and stuff sticking out. And just kind of make everything crooked and all that. It just kind of adds to the spookiness of things. But also to the weird industrial steampunk feeling. So might as well. So that's where I'm going with this. Now, of course, I have no clue if this is actually going to work out or not. And, of course, uh, defying gravity is not something that you can do in a theme park. So it'll be uh, somewhat hard to make things look like they are defying gravity, but make them look realistic at the same time. So I'll try to add some supports and make it possible to actually add enough weight to things to actually um, make them nearly float. But, of course, they're still going to have to be connected to buildings in some way some ways and you can't make the building quite as crooked as they were in Professor Layton because safety measures and theme parks and all can't, can't do that. Though again this is an over the top park. That's really some of the things that I really like about just deciding that your park is going to be over the top and somewhat unrealistic though of course it has its boundaries but you can just say well yeah no theme park is going to build a leaning tower and yeah though that might be true this is an over-the-top theme park, and I can just, um, screw logic, I'm just going to do what I want. That's basically the attitude that I wanted for this, and that kind of works out. It's a bit of freedom that you get that I really like to enjoy. So, yeah, I am not too sure about these pipes, actually. I decided to add pipes because steampunk, and I know there are people out there who are like, her or you can't do, you can't just add pipes to building to make it steampunk, that's not how it works. And I know that, but I just wanted to get that general atmosphere. But I am not too sure about the pipes. But anyway, that's it for this episode. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.